The world is undoubtedly facing the threat of climate change as a consequence of heightened carbon emissions over the past 50 years. The effects are evident, with the threats of sea level rise, erratic heat waves, floods, as well as storms, with these unpredictable weather events occurring more frequently as time goes on. We can no longer deny that the increase in frequency as well as extremity of these events experienced since the industrial boom are as a direct result of human activities that began at this time. Carbon emissions from the burning of fossil fuels are expected to double in the next 50 years. Should this occur, the result would be an increase in carbon dioxide concentration in the atmosphere prior to the industrial era of more than triple. This is predicted to lead to extreme global warming by the end of this century. Each country across the globe must now analyze what this could mean to them in terms of threats they face and how they can combat these threats. Scientists have recently designed a relatively simple plan. By identifying the problem in terms of numerical values and then breaking down the solution into steps, or as they call them, wedges. Should we continue on our current trajectory, we could see the rise in carbon emissions to above 16 billion tonnes per year before the end of the century. However, if action is taken, emissions can be reduced to a constant or a flat, followed by a reduction later in the century, once there has been a global adjustment to the shifting of the pressure for producing power from high carbon emitting sources to that of lower to little carbon emitting sources. To keep these emissions flat for the next 50 years, a trimming of carbon output would be required. The necessary constraints would result in the goal of reduction to around 8 billion tonnes a year by 2060. This would see the saving of around 200 billion tons of carbon from entering the atmosphere during this time. These carbon savings are referred to as the stabilization triangle. To achieve this, we have to be realistic and keep pace with the enormous amounts of energy our world requires. Therefore, there is a need to identify the most carbon conservative technologies. These sources of power which result in the least amount of carbon being released into the atmosphere. There are strategies available today to reduce emissions by at least 1 billion tons of carbon per year. These 1 billion tons are necessary. 8 billion can be considered as one wedge of the stabilization triangle. Therefore, if we can identify several other areas in which we can do the same, through the combination of wedges in these different areas, there can be a massive advancement in the reduction of carbon emissions and by 2060, the stabilization goal could be reached. The issue of climate change and common mitigation is a global one. It is to be kept in mind that with the difference in geography, climate, economics and politics, most countries across the globe will differ in their power needs and thus we have to examine each country individually inspired with its own combination of wedges. France is a sovereign state including territory in Western Europe and several overseas regions and territories. The European part of France, called Metropolitan France, extends from the Mediterranean Sea to the English Channel and the North Sea, and from the Rhine to the Atlantic Ocean. France spans 643,801 square kilometres and has a total population of 66 million. The capital city of France is Paris. It is the country's largest city. Paris is located in northern central France and is considered the main cultural and commercial centre. Paris is home to the most visited art museum in the world, the Louvre, with notable architectural landmarks of Paris including Notre Dame Cathedral, Arc de Triomphe and the Saint Chapel, the Eiffel Tower as well. The city is also a major rail, highway and air transport hub, served by two international airports, and the city's subway system, the Paris Metro, which serves 4.5 million passengers daily. Paris is a hub of a national road network as well. The country's ND-GAIN index score is made up of a vulnerability score as well as a readiness score. 
Vulnerability is a measure of a country's exposure, sensibility, and ability to adapt to the negative impacts of climate change. ND again measures the overall vulnerability by considering vulnerability in six supporting sectors food, water, health, ecosystem service, human habitat, and infrastructure. France is given a vulnerability score of 0,26 and a readiness score of 0,75, both of which have increased over time. France is the 12th least vulnerable country and the 19th readiest country. There is room for improvement in readiness, but both are satisfactory. Research has been done to measure each country's carbon emissions. In other words, each country's contribution towards climate change. And as of 2014, France as a whole was considered responsible for 331 metric tons of CO2 and the 19th overall in the world. China as first and the United States as second. However, the 331 metric tons of CO2 is considerably lower than it has been in previous years, with the 70 showing the highest spike in carbon emissions. In 2011, the total number of residences in Paris was 1,356,074. Of this, 85.9% were main residences. Paris averages on a mere 1,39 people per residence. This is a concern, as fewer people per residence equates to an overall higher consumption of electricity due to more individual household carrying out activities from which multiple persons in one household could benefit. These are things such as lighting, cooking, geysers, televisions, heaters, and so on. In essence, if more people lived in each house, there would be fewer individual household electricity consume events occurring. 35% of Paris's power comes from a nearby nuclear plant, and an impressive 9% from trash incineration. Although nuclear plants, carbon emissions are significantly lower than that of coal. Solar and wind facilities with their proportionally decreased carbon emissions are lacking and the potential is underutilized. A negligible amount of power is derived from wind power, as Paris is less inclined to high volumes of strong wind in their city. Solar power is also underutilized at a contribution of 0,1%. Which allow a mere 2 meters per second winds, as well as being noticeably more aesthetically pleasing are currently being put on trial in Paris. The city also holds a lot of potential in solar power with the exploration of targeting specific areas which receive a high average exposure to sunlight to allow for solar panel placement, such as roofs and roads. France is known for its well-designed cars and companies such as Renault are currently producing electric cars. These cars hold a large amount of potential in eliminating the usage of fuel one of the greatest contributors to carbon emissions by an individual. Another option, although futuristic, is the implementation of autonomic vehicles, reducing the need for personal vehicles as well as reducing individual travelling events, which could lead to the reduction of CO2 emitted by cars. France, as a renowned contributor to the automobile industry, could definitely contribute to this initiative. From the before mentioned opportunities, we are now able to develop a stabilization wages plan for Paris. The implementation of electric cars would most definitely have a large impact on fuel efficiency and could be considered the first wage in our triangle. A second fuel efficiency wedge has been allocated through the use of autonomical cars, as this initiative would reduce individual travelling events, therefore decreasing the total number of kilometres travelled by all cars in Paris each year. It was previously mentioned that a major concern for Paris was the small average number of individuals per household. A large amount of electricity could be saved should there be policies put in place to increase this number. The successful implementation of wind trees would produce a significant source of alternative power to be utilised by the city. 
the same goes for solar power, and from there on, the triangle was filled with the enhancement of already existing sources that the city has in place. 